In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I turned my crusty old palette that I built many years ago into a virtually brand new super palette with a gray toned background and a valley checker built in and why this palette, which you can build yourself, can totally up your painting game. So right when I graduated from college, I remember going to a thrift shop and finding this really hardy piece of glass in a photo frame. I don't know if it's tempered. I do think that that's probably a safer bet, but it is super sturdy and really thick. And so I just taped off the edges, put a white piece of tape on the back. And I've used this for, I want to say seven or eight years now. Okay, let's jump into the video. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the old backing and tape from this. I'm starting the way I always clean my palette, which is just scraping with a paint scraper and elbow grease. Sometimes I'll lightly mist with water. Uh, it, and it's because of this that this palette has held up for so long. It has some light scratches to it and you can see a little bit of water damage uh, to the paper, but otherwise it's held on pretty well if you are a much sloppier painter you use a lot of water you live in a human environment you probably will have to replace this more frequently i've been able to go again like close to that five six seven year mark which is pretty crazy and here i'm getting off that residue you can use something like a goo gone that always gives me a wicked headache so i'm just using some kind of a cleaner i think it has like bleach in it to clean up the residue and also to try to get the paint out of the grooves i am going to flip this palette over so i have the not scratch side up um, and hopefully use that to my advantage and get another five, six years out of this uh, just by cleaning it and turning it over. The next step, I'm measuring the backing of my new palette. I am just using a piece of scrap paper that I have in my studio that is clean on one side anyways and I'm measuring it to my glass. This is easy, line it up with two edges so you only have to cut and measure two sides. I'm simply cutting around it here with scissors. The next thing I'm going to build in is my value checker because it is not enough to just have a toned palette. I also want to have a built-in checker that I can use and reuse. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I am deciding, I think somewhat arbitrarily, that I want it to be about an inch and a half wide. And then after that, I'm calculating how long is the side. It's 14 inches and I'm dividing it up into nine equal spaces. I like nine because I like having a gradation of nine values, a dark, a light, and then seven shades of gray in between. So I'm just making sure that those are evenly spaced using some basic math. And then I will draw in the guidelines so I can paint to those in just a moment. The next step is of course, toning the backing. So the question is, why would you paint it gray? What's the significance of the color gray? Is there a right gray? Those are all fantastic questions. The first thing you should know is it's the same reason why you sometimes see painters tone their background with like red or orange or brown or sometimes gray. And that's because it is much easier to see and perceive the accuracy of color when you're not starting on a dark, dark black or a light, light white. And in that same vein, I'm trying to mix a color that is perfectly middle gray. And you can see I'm using my red glass value checker to make sure that the color I've mixed lines up relatively with that middle color, bearing in mind that acrylic paint typically dries about a half shade darker. So when you're doing this for yourself, make sure that you always mix it ever so slightly lighter than you actually want the color to be, especially if you're comparing it to a dried swatch of paint. So I've previously mixed this value checker. I actually just filmed a segment for my online art school where I talk through exactly how I mixed it, my entire process. If you are interested in learning more about value and painting, please check out my online art school. I'll provide a link if you want more expansive videos. But back to this, I am using my heavy body paints to paint on here. I've taped down my paper because the water and acrylic paint can warp your paper. So it's very important that in order for it to be nice and smooth, that you go ahead and take the extra step and tape it down. I'm just using an eyeball method here to create my straight edge because this really doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be middle gray. All right, the next thing we're making is the value checker. Admittedly, this is the part that might take longer. Again, with my online art school, I go into great depth of exactly how to do this. I also talk about value studies. All you need to know here is that in one corner, I'm using my Mars black straight from the tube. On the other side, I'm painting my white. Could I just leave it the same color as the background? Certainly you could. There's about a half shade difference. Um, I don't mind painting it in there. Uh, and then I'm mixing all of my colors in between. So it's important to start with your middle gray. Don't just start at the top and mix 
nine different shades from white or vice versa, it's really easy to let the colors get really compressed and sort of not have even spacing. So I always like to mix my middle gray and then mix my three shades between the white and middle gray and then the opposite on the dark half. And again, bearing in mind that these colors will dry a little lighter. The last thing I'll say is it might be worth mixing a value checker before you commit to painting your palette. The next step is taping your backing to the glass. Of course, make sure that it is completely dry. Give it several hours, if not overnight, just to be cautious. Here I am flipping it over. You can see that I used scrap paper and figuring out how I did this last time. Of course, then it, it hit me that I put this over the edge perfectly line up the paper and then tape. There is this saying within the woodworking world where you measure twice, cut once. And I would say that this kind of applies here. Make sure that it is super, super lined up and straight before you do that first tuck of the tape. But once you get the first couple edges perfectly lined up, it's a little easier after that. I also will point out here that I'm spending a little bit of extra time reinforcing those edges and the back of the this surface. I didn't do that last time, I wasn't quite so precious, but I'm wanting this to hold up, so I'm just taping it. You can obviously be as conservative or liberal here as you want with your tape, um, but if you want this to hold up, then I would definitely recommend really reinforcing those corners specifically. You can see here, it looks pretty exciting. If you don't wanna use blue tape, you don't have to, but I really like this. Okay, the final step is putting this palette into action. So this is where the palette usually lives over here on my little rickety fold up desk that I've had for <laughs> like a decade now. Um, this is exactly where I put it with my Stay Wet palette right next to it. I always mix my colors on this gray background and then I keep my paints wet inside the Stay Wet palette on the right. This is my system, it's tried and true. I love this setup. And here I am, I've pre-mixed a few colors and I will say it's so much easier to mix on gray. I've used some disposable gray palette paper and really fallen in love with it. So getting my glass palette, which is a little bit more eco-friendly to switch over to gray has been on my wish list for a long time. You can also see here that I'm using that same palette scraper and it scrapes up the paint beautifully. If you're having a hard time, you can lightly mist it and it comes up really easy. Here I am about a day later with a more <laughs> elaborate mix, but I'm wanting to show you with that same piece of red glass that shows you the value that let's say I mix up a color and I'm trying to figure out what the value is, especially if I, I've already made a value study or I know I need it to be darker or lighter. You can see by putting the colors down and using the glass, you can see which color matches the value. And so for me, it's kind of in between that first and second value. But the funny thing about it is I actually thought it was darker. A fun fact about value is that the more chromatic a color is, the harder it is for the human eye to perceive that value, which is why it's so helpful to have a value checking device. And the nice thing about this is it's under glass, so I can scrape the paint away and use it over and over again in my studio. It's this more sustainable sort of option uh, if you don't wanna just reuse palette paper over and over. And then finally, you guys get to have a sneak peek of my newest painting. <laughs> it's a hot dog, I love this thing. Thank you guys for watching. Make sure to check out Not Sorry Art School and also my newest book, Modern Still Life from Fruit Bowls to Disco Balls. And I'll catch you next week with a brand new educational video.